Hello and welcome to Rathod Science Academy. Today in this session we are going to see current affairs of 24th November 2024. So let's get started with our discussion. And actually today's paper is entirely regarding election results. So there are various number of articles. Already today is Sunday. There will be no editorial page, no opinion page, no text and context. So there are various articles that are very relevant from our examination point of view. And we are going to see that articles. Okay. So see this article guys, very, very important topic of the day. United Nations, one step closer to treaty to punish crimes against humanity. So what is this article? See first, it is about a treaty regarding punish people who are doing crimes against humanity. So have you heard regarding any treaty such a kind that we had regarding humanity? No. Till now, we don't have any treaty regarding punishing of crimes against humanity. So this is the first such a kind of treaty which came up by United Nations. So it is very, very important. So here you have to know about what exactly means the crimes against humanity. For example, you might see like, so in many countries, there are violence which is going on. For example, Myanmar, for example, Syria, for example, Israel. And you can take in many African countries, there are crimes against humanity is happening. So can you tell me at least some examples that which we can consider regarding the crimes against humanity? Okay. So here you can understand what exactly the meaning of crimes against humanity. So according to Rome Statute of International Criminal Code, that is ICC, that is International Criminal Code. So this Rome Statute of this ICC says that Humanity against uh, of specific criminal acts, including murder, rape, torture, apartheid is nothing but racial discrimination, deportation, and persecution of minorities. So all these comes under this crimes against humanity. So if you see the persecution of minorities, which has happened in this Rohingyas, okay, Rohingyas are persecuted minority, that is Muslim minority people, they had been coming out of which state? Myanmar from Rakhine state. So this kind of crimes are called as crimes against humanity. So now United Nations came up with a treaty regarding punishing the people who are doing these crimes against humanity now. Okay, so now let us see what this treaty is about, why this treaty is important, everything that we are going to see now. So here United Nations General Assembly, that is UNGA, it is one of the principal organ of United Nations, came up with a significant step towards a ground breaking treaty and this treaty which is aiming against that is preventing and punishing of crimes against humanity okay so here you may get a mains based question regarding this united nation treaty which is preventing and punishing the crimes against humanity or else you may get a question like define what is this crimes against humanity there they will be asking some examples of that crimes against humanity and in which countries it is going on okay and this treaty is going to be commenced from 2026 onwards. So here now we are in 2024. From 2026 onwards, it is going to come into commencement. And can you tell me uh, in the same year, which is going to be coming into commencement? One more important thing in news. European Union's carbon border adjustment management, right? CAA, BM is also coming to existence from 2026. And even this treaty is also coming to existence from 2026. Two important things are going to come in 2026. Okay, now let us see the key points that you have to remember. So first one is you have to understand what is the significance of this treaty. So whenever we are coming this kinds of treaties, especially against crimes of humanity, so it will be helpful for ensuring of people standard of living, and ensuring the life with dignity because article 21 is a fundamental right right so that article 21 says that everyone has the right to live and as well as that to right to live with personal liberty so that can be ensured to everyone if we are having this kind of treaty and next one here is we can already we are having some treaties regarding war crimes and as well as genocides but crimes against humanity there is no treaty till now so whenever we are coming with this kind of treaty, that will be also complementing whatever the existing treaties are there regarding war crimes, regarding genocides, etc. So that we can create a legal framework with full accountability. And next one here is 
yes whenever we are com coming up with this kind of resolution so it will be helpful for commitment to uphold human rights standards so at the international level we have united nation human rights commission so in the same way if you want to ensure the human rights and the, their standards and to combat impunity so that we need to have even international cooperation so if you're having this kind of treaties we can also ensure international cooperation addressing this kind of heinous crimes across the world and next one here is the challenge here is the timeline so this article is saying that from 2026 onwards we are going to implement this treaty so what happens if any crimes are happening between this 2024 to 2026 there is no treaty which is helpful to prevent this kind of incidents in these two years so here this is one cause of concern now so if there is a delay in implementing of treaty then what happened there will be continued sufferings for the victims so here we need to take some urgent steps or we can take some swift action in international law so that we have to stop this kind of events from 2024 to 2026 as well and this one here is one more important point which is focused in this treaty is they are survivor centric so whatever the approach they are taking that approach is survivor centric that means if there is any crime which happened in any area so who are the victims who survived so based on their experience we will be shaping our legal framework so that we can address exactly what are the problems faced by the survivors okay and next one here is because of this resolution we are going to have a small hope in the world that yes whenever any type of crime which is happening so we are having an international law which will be deals regarding this so that in future we can save human right abuses and as well as we can also ensure accountability and as well as justice rather than keeping silent on this kind of crimes okay something is better than nothing right so if you are not having any kind of treaty yes we we are silent on this so rather than this silence when we are coming with, the, with this kind of treaty, we can ensure that in future this is not going to be happen. So there will be international cooperation, collaboration between the countries. And as well as we can ensure accountability and even we can ensure justice to the victims of this kind of crimes. Okay, so I said about what is this crimes against humanity and gave you examples. And see this article. How should India tackle diabetes load? So what is the meaning of load? load is nothing but burden yes or no so what is this diabetes load so this article is saying that there is increasing of diabetes cases in india so why we are talking about this diabetes cases now because international diabetes day we are celebrating on every year on november 14th so what is the specialty of november 14th children's day not only children's day but even international diabetes day will be celebrated on this day itself so on this day, on the occasion of International Diabetes Day, Lancet came up with a report. In that report, it said that India is having more than 200 million diabetes patients. But in India, whatever the data that is published by India, it says that only 100, 100 million diabetes patients are there. So here, Lancet report is saying 200 million and our Indian reports, that is especially ICMR, that is what is ICMR? Indian Council for Medical Research. Okay. So ICMR says that just 100 million diabetes patients are there. But International Lancet report is saying that 200 million diabetes patients in India itself. So overall in the world, there are 800 million uh, patients of diabetes. In this 800, 200 they are there in India. That means quarter patients. 1 by 4 of diabetes world diabetes patients are there in india okay but india's data is saying that only 100 million that means it is claiming only half so what might be the reason so why there is that much difference regarding the data of international report and indian report because international report and uh, indian report they are taking different parameters of identifying diabetes so because of these things, there is a lot of difference that we are getting. So, okay, this difference we are keeping aside. There is no need of remembering numbers, but you have to remember worst quarter of diabetes patients are present in India. This is enough. Okay, so now here, what are the steps can be taken by our country to control this diabetes? 
Are you getting my question? So what are the steps can be taken? So in this diabetes, what happened in this diabetes? There is increasing of blood glucose level or blood sugar level is increasing because of hormone called as insulin. And here we have different types of diabetes, type 1, type 2 and gestational. Type 1 is there is no production of insulin itself. Type 2 is insulin is produced but you will be having resistance to this insulin. And type 3 is called as gestation. That means during pregnancy time, that pregnant woman will be getting diabetes. So actually in India, type 2 diabetes mellitus is rising day by day, not type 1 or gestational diabetes mellitus. Okay, now let us see this article. So from which subject you can deal with this? From GS paper 3 under science and technology, right? Okay, now let us see this article in detail. On International Diabetes Day, Lancet study revealed that 800 million adults globally, across the globe, 800 million people are suffering with this diabetes. In India, it is accounting more than 200 million, that is around 212 million people of diabetes patients are there in India. But Indian data, according to ICMR, that is Indian Council of Medical Research Estimates, says that it is just 100 million, it is not 212 million. So why? There is because of difference in testing methodologies. Okay, India uses only fasting glucose and OGTT, that is oral glucose tolerance test. So we are using only these two. Fasting glucose means nothing but, so while you are fasting, okay, that too at early morning. So you will be taking dinner at night. So after dinner, early morning, you will be testing your blood sample. In that blood sample, how much sugar is or blood glucose level is there, that will be tested. So if it is one more than 120, you will be having sugar and we are having different stages in that. That is called as fasting glucose. And next one is oral glucose tolerance test. So you will be giving glucose orally. So how much it is tolerant? So how much glucose you will be eliminated? That will be tested. So these are the two parameters that we are taking in India. But in the Lancet study, that is international study, they will be taking HbA1c measurements. That means they will be taking the blood and in that blood sample, so from last 6 to 12 months of time, so how much amount of average sugar or glucose level which is there in your blood. So that will be tested in your international study. But here in India, instantly we will be testing. For example, if you had lunch in the afternoon, if you test if you test this fasting glucose, normally it will be below 120. Okay. So instant methods we are using, but they are using long term methods. So long term methods are sustainable methods than compared to that of instant. For example, if you are consuming more amount of uh, sweets now and if you are testing your glucose after one or two hours, obviously there will be very high glucose level in your blood. Okay. So because of this testing methodologies which are different from India and as well as international level, so this difference that we are seeing, it is more than 100 million people, the difference is between these two reports. Okay, now this article is saying that we need to have proper diabetes management. It is very, very important now because across the world, 800 million people are there. But in India itself, more than 200 million people, they are having this diabetes. So we need to have the proper management of this diabetes and as well as treatment access is very important. And even this article is saying that whenever we are comparing with this uh, middle income countries and as well as low income countries and high income countries, there is a huge gap regarding treatment, regarding uh, assessment methods, regarding testing methods, everything, there is a law, huge difference. So we need to have a unified methodology so that if you see in any rankings, so normally the rankings will be given by especially Western countries. So in every rankings, if you see the ranking of this low income countries or less developed countries, it will be below. Why? Because we are not matching those methodologies. So if you are improving that and if you are coming up with the common methodologies, then there will be no issue in any index or any ranking. Okay, so that is the thing which mainly said here. Okay, now let us see the key points that you have to remember. The first one here is we are using different testing methods. So testing methods are different from India and as well as Lancet. So because of this, we are getting huge diabetes prevalence figures. There is a lot of difference between the data which is given by that international and as well as national level. So that here we need to have a proper accurate data and we need standardized testing practices globally. So across the globe, everyone should use a proper standard methodology. And next one here is Lancet study is also saying that there is growing treatment gap, especially low and middle income countries like India. There is a gap in 
especially risk of younger populations and as well as we need equitable healthcare access so in india people because of changing of lifestyle there is increased risk of diabetes and hypertension which is happening especially younger population in india are most vulnerable for this diabetes mellitus and next one here is because of this diabetes so do you know what will be the complications so have you ever seen this sugar patients in your family what happens to that sugar patients they can't okay they can't eat everything next what will be the complications if they got any small injury will it be cured easily no why so because of high blood glucose levels it will be having impact on the platelets and as well as injury mechanism so everything will be changed because of increased sugar levels so because of that if they are getting any disease the infection will be rapidly spread, spreading into other organs and there will be the high chance of infection throughout the body our uh, next what happens if they are getting diabetes obviously they will be getting hypertension also our uh, next if we are going for untreated that will leads to multiple organ failure first kidneys will be failing or else any other organ like even that will be transferred to the brain in the brain they will be getting the water fluid filled everything this is will be like more complications will be having if you are not ma managing your blood sugar levels okay so actually if you are having this diabetes that will leads to severe complications especially there will be increased heart disease kidney failure etc so here we have to take proper preventive measures so that we can mitigate future healthcare burdens as well and next one here is as you know we are having different types of diabetes type 1 type 2 and gestational diabetes mellitus we are having more number of type 2 diabetes mellitus in our country so type 2 diabetes mellitus one important cause of getting that is lifestyle modifications so if you are having habituated to smoking drinking that is alcohol and even there is no physical work or like if you are not doing any physical activity or physical exercise and if you are having increased mental pressure or work pressure stress anxiety depression so all these things that will leads to the type 2 diabetes mellitus so we have to focus on awareness and as well as education of this type 2 diabetes mellitus for the people especially today's young generation and next one here is whenever there is increasing of diabetes complications so initially if you had this diabetes if you're not managing the diabetes that will leads to complications like heart disease or kidney disease then what happen obviously the healthcare cost increases so whenever the healthcare cost increases there will be also increasing of debt trap on that family okay so here this article is saying that we need to take some urgent actions from government side from healthcare providers to enhance the treatment of this diabetes and as well as prevention strategies and we have to improve the testing methodologies and as well as treatment accessibilities and even we need international collaboration to improve treatment and as well as to share the standardized global testing methodologies as well so this is about this topic and see this article what can caqm do to improve delhi air what does a caqm commission on air quality management so when it was formed in year ah come on recall your memory when it was formed i said year hey ma tell me ha huh? so when we ah uh, so from when from when and from when uh, or which year we are considering this air quality index in delhi uh, 2000 not 3 not 4 ah in 2016 we formed the caqm okay what is the caqm what are the functions of the caqm uh, it need to take measures to control air pollution how uh, what is the grap graded response action plan so how many stages are there in this grap four what are there 1 2 3 4 so now which graded action response plan had been implemented in delhi 4 so in that 4 what will be there uh what will do in that fourth plan construction activities complete ban of construction activities next one is okay vehicles odd even plan will be implemented next yes 
closure of schools and offices they will go for online education and work from home policy so recently we discussed in news that work from home policy had been implemented in this delhi region so why supreme court had been interfered in the recent past supreme court why supreme court interfered in the caqm why did supreme court pull up this commission for air quality management recently so actually now pollution in delhi is seen as severe and severe plus category that is more than 450 level okay so because of this what happened now it is a responsibility of caqm to implement some steps to control this air pollution so it have to implement this grade 4 action plan so supreme court criticized this caqm because it had not been implemented this graded response action plan for evenly throughout this delhi because of the supreme court criticized the caqm that was the thing that we were discussing from last 4 to 5 days so the same thing which is given here i think they didn't get any news again they gave that same news okay here you have to see about this what is caqm everything so just revise your notes okay delhi air pollution has reached severe levels prompting supreme court to criticize caqm for its ineffective response it is not taking proper response to control that okay and actually it has been established to issue the directions and to enforce compliance to improve this air quality in delhi so that's it you can see all these things so i already gave you a question regarding what is the responsibility of supreme court or judiciary in making effective uh, in making this legislature and executive effective so in that way you can add about this role of supreme court and how it is questioning the caqm regarding not implementing proper steps the same thing okay there is nothing about new thing that we have to discuss now so say this article tree islands help restore nature in oil palm plantations so what is this article is about tree islands what is this tree islands what can you see in that image tree islands ah uh, can you see something ah uh, trees ah uh, trees trees on an island so how this trees on an island formed how these can be formed are they are corals no it is different from corals right okay so how they are formed and what is this tree island see this image and say something there the small patches in the wetland where we can see the trees are grown so can you see the different types of trees or same species same species so what will be the advantages of this tree islands what is the advantages of this tree islands okay they can control the speed of waves okay so that they will help for coastal protection our uh, next okay habitat flora and fauna uh, next i want very important point uh, tell me what about trees what they'll do ah uh, yes carbon dioxide sequestration okay so this article is saying that tree island will helps to restore nature in oil palm plantation so what is this palm oil plantations why we have to go for this palm oil plantations in this tree islands yes we will import palm oil from which countries Indonesia, Malaysia, and not Ukraine. Ukraine will be getting sunflower oil, not palm oil. Malaysia, Indonesia, and one more country. <laughs> Malaysia, Indonesia. <laughs> no, there itself, nearby country. So tell me the countries of Asia. Ah, uh, not that. Down countries. Ah, uh, Philippines, Brunei, Indonesia, Indonesia Malaysia, Malaysia, Singapore. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So tell me if you are go if you are going for growing of this palm oil in these three islands, what will be the advantage? So we can reduce our imports. Ah, uh, apart from this, when we are going for growing of a palm oil plantations in these three islands. what will be the advantage we can increase production of palm oil and so that we can decrease our exports so what happened why we discussed this palm oil in the recent news uh, imports increased or decreased increased why due to festive seasons there is increasing of palm oil imports 
Okay. Another advantage of this palm oil plantations in the three islands. Hmm? Another advantage, carbon sequestration, okay, that point had been said, right? Okay, so tell me in which areas we can go for uh, palm oil tree islands. Normal in wetlands, okay. So can you give me some examples of places can we, where we can go for this? Three islands of palm oils. Think, think. Where we have wetlands in our country? Ah, uh, Chilika next. Ah, uh, next. Hmm. Uh, uh, tell me, tell me. So, can you tell me what are the features of these three islands? What are the features of these tree islands? Features. Ah, they should be there in wetlands, coast areas. Next. Ah, saline water. Okay, next. So tell me what is the meaning of island? A piece of land which is covered by water in all sides is called as three sides is called peninsula. Ah, all sides is called as island. Okay, let me explain you about what is tree island. Okay, tree islands are unique ecological features normally seen in wetland ecosystem. And especially we are having a very small patches of elevated land. So within that wetland, we will be having small patches of elevated land. So which will be supporting vegetation. Okay, and these islands, they will be creating biodiversity hotspots and they will be offering habitats for various plants and animal species. So how this former... So these tree islands, they may form naturally or by the human intervention, we can make them. So whenever human intervention is there, they are called as artificial tree islands. So how they will be forming, for example, whenever there is any organic material like peat which had been accumulated there, they will be forming the elevated land. Or else, whenever the erosion is happening in one side, erosion, after erosion, that will be transported and deposited. After erosion, transportation, uh, deposition, then what happened? There will be the formation of tree islands. There we need water currents. That means moving of water. So whenever the movement of water is happening because of erosion deposition, we will be forming these tree islands. And next one here is especially limestone outcroppings will also cause these tree islands. Okay. And if you go to this topic, so actually this topic I found in science page today. Okay. So this article is saying that tree islands in uh, oil palm plantations can enhance biodiversity recovery. So you all know that because of this climate change, there is increasing of sea level and as well as glacial melting. So because of that, what happened? Most of these islands are very much vulnerable. So whenever islands are sinking, that will lead to loss of uh, life, loss of property and as well as loss of biodiversity which is present there because they are very rich in biodiversity. So because of this, an investigation in Sumatra which had been revealed that so there are around 50 to 3 islands. They are there in that Sumatra region with a very diverse native species and they are successfully promoting the colonization of endemic uh, trees which is helpful for ecological res uh, restoration. Especially whenever you are seeing this tree islands, so in that tree islands we will be seeing only one type of plant species. That is an example of monoculture. So monoculture it is happening that too we are taking only endemic trees that is we are not taking any invasive species there only the species which is present in that area we are going for growing of that plants in that tree island so actually this article is saying that whenever we are going for the implementing of this tree islands with monoculture that will be helpful for ecological restorations so that we can make them as biologically biodiversity hotspots so what are these biodiversity hotspots biodiversity means diversity is Different types. Bio means life. That means we are having different types of living species in that area. That is called as biodiversity hotspots. So we can create more biodiversity hotspots, especially in these wetlands when we are going for creating of these tree islands. And this one here is, it will be also very helpful uh, for native species to occupy that habitat. 
so that we can enhance local flora and as well as fauna here. So we can create micro habitats for biodiversity recovery. So as you all know that because of climate change, there is decreasing of the native species happening. So whenever we are going for restoration of these tree islands, we can go for creating of micro habitats for biodiversity recovery, especially the local flora and fauna. And next one here is the presence of endemic trees, which indicates that there is a very much huge potential for especially restoring of preserving of very unique genetic resources that will be helpful for ecological stability. And even whenever we are creating this kind of island, they will be giving ecosystem services like carbon sequestration and as well as soil improvement. And even it will be helpful for combating of climate change in this planetation landscapes. And this one is, but whenever we are going for this monoculture, that is a practicing of only single species in this agriculture, it will be having a huge uh, challenges like biodiversity loss may happen. So we have to combat this challenges by some innovative solutions. And we're also having long term benefits like when we are going for this uh, palm oil industry, we can balance the production, we can increase the production of this palm oil because we are exporting from other countries. So, and we even we can maintain the ecological health. Okay, so that is the thing. So actually entire our newspaper is filled with election results only. I searched a lot, at least twice, I searched the newspaper to get these four articles, guys. Even though it had been repeated, but I have no choice. I have to explain this. So these are the important topics that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. So by this I'm concluding. Thank you so much for watching. And please do like this class if you really like this. And also please do share this class to your friends and do subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy. And we are providing daily current affairs quiz and also daily one mains question and also word of the day in our Telegram channel. Please do follow our Telegram channel for sure. And the link is given in the description box. Don't forget.